Hello everyone, it's Luisa Gloria, and I'm reading three short poems for you. The first one is called The Buddha in Me. The Buddha in me waves to the Buddha in you. Sometimes it is the other way around. Mutually, we surprise each other, peering out suddenly from behind a potted plant at a crowded mall, careening into a stack of trays at the cafeteria, or skidding on a sidewalk sticky with rain and pollen, so we have to help each other up. Sometimes you've paid the fee at the toll before I even drive up to the window. Today, during my lunch break, I crouched on the front steps of a building to scrape and pack snow into the shapes of birds. After the first one, I made another, then another, until there were a dozen of them lined up with pebbles or bits of dirt for eyes. The tops of their heads glistened in the sun. Most everyone rushed by, preoccupied. You were the small one that shyly ventured out from behind your mother's market basket to ask if you could take a snowbird into your cupped hands. And my second poem is called Love Poem Inspired by Leftovers. Once I read a poem in which everyone living is allotted only a little over a hundred words every day and a man saves most of his words so he can whisper I love you over and over to his lover quiet on the phone each night. He never asks how could he what she spent all her precious language on. He never upbraids her for using the last dozen or so on an order for food or coffee or to answer the doctor's query on where it hurts or how. It sounds incredulous until I consider how many times I've been given the last serving of fruit or slice of cheese, the only seat in a waiting room, how he'll drive the miles and miles that still need to be covered through which I'm never chided when sometimes I fall asleep. And the third and last poem I'm reading is called Syllogism. All books are things with pages. Some books are mysteries. Therefore, the slide rule will not work after it has tumbled into the rabbit hole. Therefore, only the gulls will know the mystery of the fish spine left to shimmer on the beach. And all poems are things with hinges, and doors work nicely as telescopes. Therefore, the circus tent works better in moonlight than it does at noon. Therefore, the animals are shy and you won't ever know how facile they are with old or dormant languages. Therefore, a panda is a fallacy only if you mistake it for anything else but a penguin. But even in such instances, a fallacy may be forgiven, and all paths that diverge in the wood this time of year are either yellow or not yellow, but none of them is any less mysterious. Choose one and choose another. Choose all or nothing. Or choose to dwell in the more precarious middle. Choose a condition, preferably involving books or maps or letters, some kind of field into which you 
might endlessly fall.